it started off with me just telling scary stories with me just telling y'all things that I wrote and you know putting a little music behind it you know I figured that um you know I was the only one from where I'm from doing this kind of stuff so maybe it'll catch on but I had no idea what I was really doing I was really creating a family it's a lot more than just me running my mouth for saying some junk that sound good how how did it get this far how did I get to this point sometimes I sit back and wonder Part of the reason I got where I got is because of y'all. I wouldn't trade y'all for the world. Ain't nothing in the world more valuable than all for the y'all. When I was young, like about three or four years old, my parents decided to move from the city to a suburban town called Woodford. Now you see my daddy at this time, he got this big promotion at this job, which meant more money. You know, that meant we could afford a better place to live, man. So we finally did what everybody always said they wanted to do, move up out the hood. And now the reason why my parents chose Woodford was because one of my daddy co-workers also lived up in the and said it was a decent place to raise a family. Schools was better, you know, had more parks and stuff like that. So, you know, that's all my parents needed to hear, man. So after a few months of searching and planning, you know, my folks packed up the family car and we drove out there and settled in a nice old house on this real quiet street had a good sized backyard, you know, I had room to run around and play. And you know, growing up on the street, man, we ain't really had no, you know, yeah, like your little square, everybody had their little square, cause you know, the houses built right next up on each other, man. So, you know, having a yard like this, you know, we had enough room to throw the football, run out there, run routes, throw the hell, man. Had enough room to play dead man pick up. Now, for y'all that don't know, Dead Man Pickup is a, you know, football game where you just throw the football up in the air and whoever catches that mug, you just, you just tear them up, man. Whoever touched the ball getting tore up, you know, so we finally had room to do, you know, all that kind of stuff, man. Now, Woodford was and still is a good sized town, and, you know, it's a good place, man, you know, especially for the kids and all that. You know, we had a little mall few movie theaters, a couple of bowling alleys, you know, plenty of parks and stuff, like I was saying. Hold on, man. Let me turn my phone on mute, because somebody keep calling me. You know, they know I'm trying to tell y'all stories. I don't know what you're calling me for. Maybe they don't know, but, you know, right now I'm with my family, man. I'll call y'all back. So anyway, so my friends and me, man, like, um, we never really got bored, man. We always had something to do. Now, it was one thing that me and my friends did, and it still, man, that junk still creeped me out to this day, man. Now, just outside of town, it's a stretch of road called Red Bridge Road. It's like a 13-mile, two-lane road that cut through this real thick forest, and it connect the country road to the south and the state highway to the north. Now along this road, there's this red covered bridge that crossed a creek at the halfway point, you know, which is how the road got its name. Now just north of the bridge, there's a few old houses all on the west side of the road. Now I heard a whole bunch of stories about this road and how it was just like a magnet for the supernatural, man. You know, everything from people seeing Bigfoots and stuff to UFOs, you know, witches and they little witch groups and stuff. You know, it's um, all that kind of stuff, man. 
Now, one of the stories was the axe man. This, you know, this axe wielding ghost that was out for revenge or something, man. And he haunted the south end of the bridge. Because, you know, the south side always the worst side, man. It never fails, man. But anyway, I heard about this ghost when I was a junior in high school. My friend Cynthia, or my girlfriend, I'm my girl at the time. You know, my two friends, Maddie and uh, Kevo, man. They was having lunch in the cafeteria. When Matt spoke up and said, man, hey, why don't we drive out the Red Bridge, man, and go looking for the Axe Man tonight? So then Cynthia come in and said, who the Axe Man? Now, Cynthia had moved to town a year before and hadn't heard too much of the urban legends that made, you know, made their rounds around Woodford or whatever. Now, Maddie got all excited and prepared to go into his story mode. You know, Maddie, he think he could tell a story better than me, but... You know, he wrong, man. You know, can't nobody tell a story better than me, man. <laughs> now, so, uh, Kevo, he just rolled his eyes, man, because he already know what time it is. You know, he like, oh, man, here we go again. So, Maddie kicked the story off. Man, back in the early 1970s, it was a man who lived alone in this old, in uh, one of them old houses on Red Bridge Road, right? Now, now, ain't much known about him, but many people believe he chose to live alone because he had some time in prison for abusing his uh, family. Now, when he got out, he found life on the outside was worse than when he was in prison. Now he ain't had no family to go back to And his friends ain't want nothing to do with him And he couldn't get a job like the one he had And he had to sit on pumping gas down at the local um, gas station You know they used to call it a service station back in the day Now because of his path Everybody in town just pretty much looked down on him So he took to um, living in one of them um, houses man Just being alone only coming in town to work and buy him some groceries or something. So now as soon as he was settling in, he took to walking along the road that night. You know, just to clear his head and try to figure out, you know, where he would go from there. And it was during one of these walks that somebody killed him. What happened to him? Cynthia asked. Maddie just smiled and continued on, man. You know, he was walking along the road at night as usual. And he just crossed the bridge, you know, heading south when a man came out from behind the shadow with an axe. And before he could react, the killer got him with two shots. Flop, flop. The first blow took off a good part of the left side of his face. And the second one hit him right up in the chest, killed him right on the spot, man. And nobody know who the killer was. You know, some say it was a deranged serial killer. Who killed the victims with an axe and other sailors his relative with his ex-wife who thought the man got off too easy and took matters into his own hand. Now whoever it was, they were never caught. You know, and since the ghost of that man, you know, the ghost of that man like is still walking around, right around the bridge, man. You go to that bridge at night, you see him holding the axe, looking for his killer. Trying to figure out who did that to him. So he take out anybody who crossed his path. Straight up. Just like that. Now when he finished his story. You know Cynthia just sat there for a moment man. Just sitting there for she said anything man. And then she said um. That sounds scary. Yeah that's pretty freaking scary man. Uh, I done seen a lot of scary movies but. The way you just told that, that thing was scary, man. Uh, maybe we should go out there. So now he looked at her with surprise. He said, girl, you you for real? You ain't, you know, you said you scared. And she just said, look, uh, you know, I don't believe in no ghosts. <laughs> Even if that man is real us, he, you know, he can't, if he real, he can't hurt us if we in the car. <laughs> we just stay in the car. You know, so we all say, yeah, we go check it out, man. The worst we thought could happen is we get bored just sitting in the car of the police stoppers, one of them state troopers or something. You know, they had their little uh, headquarter thing at the edge of the town. You know, so if that happened, we just tell them, you know, we tell them we just out there to see the X. <laughs> no, we ain't going to tell them we saw the X, man. They're going to think we out there. Huh? We can't say that, man. So we made plans to meet up at Maddie House at Sam. 
And Kevo, me and Kevo had basketball practice, and you know, we had this big game against Greenmark coming up. And, you know, our coach wanted us to stay shy for the game, you know. So, you know, Cynthia had a little history project to do because, you know, girls always take care. They they take care of their business in school, boy. Girls do not play, boy. So now we met up at Maddie's house. We all piled up into that Mustang he had, man, and drove out the Red Bridge. Now, even though, you know, it was a good night, man, it was real dark, though, in the woods along the path, and uh, so Manny had turned them high beams on just so he could see up the road. I guess the trees covered up the little moonlight or whatever. Now, um, soon, you know, that covered bridge came into view, and Manny stopped the car, put it in park. Now, Red Ridge wasn't used very much, you know, if at all, man, especially with the interstate on the other side of town. And nobody lived in all them old houses on the north side of the bridge in years. So we, you know, we were safe just being in the middle of the lane. So then 10 minutes went by. Then 20 minutes. Then 45 minutes. Finally, before we known it, we've been there a whole hour. So I'm like, man, this y'all suck, man. We've been here an hour and ain't seen nothing, man. And Kevo and Cynthia, they both agreed. And, you know, you know I'm like, come on, Matty, man. The X Man, just a myth, okay? That's what Kevo said. And even if some guy was murdered by an axe killer, why would his ghost carry the same weapon he was killed with? Cynthia said. Matty shrugged and said, you know, maybe he's hoping this killer will return to the scene of the crime so he could, you know, return the favor. Anyway, come on, y'all. Just five more minutes, man. If nothing happened, we can go home. You know, Maddie just had his mind made up, boy. So I told him, all right, man, you five more minutes, man. And after that, you know, we going to get up out of here, man. Gosh, dog. Shoot, I ain't trying to sit here all dang night, man. Now, just as I said that, we saw a figure, man, walking across the bridge. You know, at first we, you know, we thought we kind of might have been tripping. Maybe it was a, a, a animal or something, man, a dog, a deer or something, man. But we knew we thought we, you know, we like we got it. There got to be something down there. So now the bridge was long and the high beams didn't shine all the way through. Now it appeared to be a man. You know, after they started getting a little closer, he had this big heavy coat on, man. It looked like a, a cowboy hat or something. And it looked like he was carrying something long in his hands. And it was hanging down, kind of dragging it almost. Now, we all just sitting there staring, man. And that figure getting closer, like he was moving slow, but he was moving fast at the same time. Now, when he started coming into the range of the high beams, we saw the man legs. He had on his worn black work boots, man, blue jeans. And when he came closer, we all screamed, man. The man was wearing a big, heavy coat, man, and it was soaked in blood, man. And the blood was just oozing from his chest, man. He had this big old gash up in his chest, man. But his face, bro, his face was even worse, man. You know, it might have been a decent-looking face at one time, man. Nice little mustache and stuff going on, but the left side of his face was a mess, man. That junk would tow up from the flow up, so for real, man. That whole side of his face was just smashed, man. Bloody. He had this big old, big hole smashed into the side of it. And under the hole, you could see his jaw bones, man, and his teeth. And blood and stuff was all over his teeth. And he held that old axe, man. Rusty axe handle all, you know, worn out, man. And we said, bro, that's the axe, man. That ain't no costume. That ain't no joke. You can't even... Look, that's some... You need some dang CGI to do them kind of effects. That's the axe, man. Now, before we knew it, that man was right at Matt's window, man. And he swung that mug back and shot at that driver's side window. And it went through the window and almost hit Matt. And Matty let out this big old high-pitched girl scream, man. And at this point, we all screaming, man. And Kevo, he was in the front with uh, Matty, man. He like, bro, we got to get out of here, man. You know, and so he ain't even tell him twice, man. He was already putting the car in reverse and peeling out, man. 
And as we did that, the axe man got ready to make another blow, man. But the axe came down on the hood as we pulled away. The tires made a loud screech, and that axe just tore a long gash up in the hood, man. I couldn't believe it, man. The road was straight, so he just kept speeding backwards until we finally like reached the country road. It was only then that he turned around and put the thing in drive, man. That man was shook, bro. Straight up. Now, we did tell the police that we were attacked, but, you know, we ain't tell them that it was a ghost, man. You know, because we already know they're going to drug test us. We tell them that junk. They're going to think he was driving under the influence. We tell them we got attacked by a dang ghost. And then, well, especially if you say ghost, they're going to be like, well, how could a ghost hit the car? Ain't a ghost supposed to go through the car? So how could he swing an axe and actually tear the car up? See, that junk sound crazy. Just me saying it, man. So, you know, um, we just told them some crazy man out on Red Bridge messed with us. And they said they'd check it out, but none of it came up. We ain't never heard nothing back, at least. They probably ain't even really go out there. But if they did go, they waited till the morning to go. Because everybody heard the ghost stories out there. So, cops ain't that brave, man. You know, so, and if they did catch him, I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad they didn't even try, man, because, you know, he a ghost, man, so I guess he can't, I guess he could go through the walls if he wanted to. I guess ghosts just pick, you know, what they want to do, man. So if he can go through the walls, they probably go through the handcuffs and go through the back seat of their car. And go through the bars in the prison, so I'm glad they didn't catch him, man, because he would have really jacked him up. And uh, it took a little while for Matty to get his car fixed, man. You know, his dad told the police, you know, uh, what we told him, so he ain't get grounded, but he did have a stricter curfew for a few weeks. And we never brought that junk up, man. It's my first time talking about it, so. Yeah, man, I ain't brought that up, so I hope y'all, I hope y'all can feel my pain on this one, man. That junk still haunt me to this day, man. Okay, I got another story for you, okay? Now, someone once said that life a trick, but me, I say life is a stanky ball headed trick a stanky gap tooth ball headed dog mouth trick that don't live for nothing but death and destruction and pain and suffering man ain't I'm telling the truth though it's just from the moment we born it's already determined when where and how we die and I always thought I'd live to be, a, you know, old age and go peacefully in my sleep. But it ain't turned out that way, man. I glued, you know, I, I glowed up in uh, Florida. You know, with only two kinds of weather, man. Sunshine and rain. You know, I worked for this big tech company. And uh, I worked up out the Tampa office. And one day my boss called me into the office and told me I'm promoted, man. I was all excited and like, you know, that's great, man. I've been working hard and I appreciate you recognizing my hard work, man. And and I, I'm just a company man and I want to do all I can for the company and all that. You know, I'm talking all that good junk, right? So then my boss spoke up and said, now there's a catch, though. You know, you'll need to move. Now, at first, I wasn't too worried. You know, there's several offices up in Florida. So I thought that, uh, you know, I'd be going to one of them offices, man. So where I'd be going, I asked, you know, Jacksonville, Lando, Fort Lauderdale. You know, like, which one? He said, and my boss just shook his head and said, I need one of those. You know, we got a uh, position up in Minneapolis. I sat there looking stupid in the mug, man. Minneapolis. You know, all that uh all that good work office talk went out the uh, went out the window, but I'm like Minneapolis. You mean like Minneapolis and Minnesota? 
My boss gave me this little weird little smile, man, with laugh and said, is there any other Minneapolis? I mean, I started to you say, is there any other way I should crack your head open, try to be funny? She finna send me to dang Minneapolis, man. I don't know one person. I ain't never met nobody that said, yeah, I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, I bet y'all ain't neither. Y'all ever, I bet some of y'all live in Minnesota ain't never even met nobody from Minnesota. Who the heck lives in Minnesota, man? It's cold as a polar bear toenail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I ain't happy about that junk, man. And uh, you know, but I did have a cousin who lived like in um, I think I don't know Detroit or something, man. Stay, he stayed right up there somewhere, man. One in Minneapolis, I think he stayed in Detroit, man. And he told me, man, it was so cold up there in the winter, boy. He said it was so cold if you spit, that junk be froze before it hit the ground, man. But I had to support my family, and uh, me and my wife just keep having kids. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just said, baby, we got to go. We keep having kids because I think she lied to me about getting the IUD put in. I'm like, well, you got an IUD. Ain't no way we supposed to keep having kids, man. <laughs> she, she be lying, man. She trying to make me have a bunch of kids so I don't leave her, man, because... You know what the old school guys say, right? It's cheaper to keep her. Cheaper. Cheaper. It's cheaper to keep her. But anyway. <laughs> now, uh, me and my wife moved with our, you know, with our kids and everything. And at first it wasn't too bad, man. The spring and the summer. And even the fall, you know, it's pretty nice, man. But when winter came, that junk came hard, man. Man, the first day of winter, it snowed like crazy. And that Saturday, I spent the whole day almost shoveling from the driveway, from the sidewalk. You know, the, gosh, man, it was terrible, man. And I lived in Florida my whole life, man. So I ain't never had to shovel all this white stuff, man. Only white stuff you see in Florida is cocaine, man. Now, when I came in, you know, my body was just hurting, man. So I took a nice warm bath and just sat up in my Lazy Boy recliner, you know, watching Netflix on my 80-inch. And, uh, you know, I did dozing off like an old man. And uh, come Sunday, I was still worn out, man. I ain't even get up and go to church, man. Hey, you know, that's that's strange for me, man. My wife and the kids went. I ain't go. But I'll tell you what. I wish I did go, man. Because Monday come. And the streets and roads all been cleared, man. You know, so I was feeling better by then. My body wasn't hurting a little. You know, I was still a little sore, but not as bad as it was. So I got up in my seat with little Alexa, and I, you know, made my way to work, man. Slipping and sliding a little bit, but you know, I was starting to get the hang of driving on the snow. And when I got there, man, I was still a little bit early. And I got out of my car and made my way to the building. Then it happened, man. I had only gone like a few feet when I stopped, you know, stepped on a patch of ice. It happened so fast, man. My foot slipped out from under me and I fell backwards and my head hit that pavement, boy, with a, like, and I could hear the crack when my head hit, but I was out of it, though. But I heard that crack though, man. Now I woke up in a daze, man. My vision was still hazy and my head hurt like a trick, man. And when my vision cleared, I was confused, man, because in front of me was this red Cadillac. Now, this was strange because I could have sworn the car parked in the space across from me was a dark blue aura. You know, a Saturn aura, man. You know, you remember when you see a Saturn, man. <laughs> you don't see no dang Saturn too often, man. You know, so I shook my head. I was like, dang, man, I must have banged my head hard, man. Oh, I can't remember what. I felt my head and the side, you know, from that nasty bump, man. There wasn't no blood. You know, I had a hard head, man. So, it take a little more than some pavement and a good slip to bust my head open, man. So, you know, I just shrugged it off, man, and went in the office, man, and saw the receptionist. You know, they had a little nurse on staff, so maybe she'd take a look at it, man. So, I was like, hey, um... This is a spot in the parking lot 
with some ice, man. That junk needs to be taken care of. Man, I slipped on it and bust my head almost, man. Can you get somebody out there and put some of that salt stuff on there or something? And she ain't answer me. She just kept on typing. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What's up? You don't hear me? So I'm standing there clapping my hands. Excuse me. Do you hear me talking to you? Huh? Man, okay. All right. The lady ain't even blink, man. So I finally got mad. I went up in the office. I said, I just go to work, man. Somebody else slip. It's on her. Because I did what I was supposed to do. I ain't going out there and fixing it. I be the slipped again, man. So I try saying hey to people, man. And, you know, and everybody ignored me. And I couldn't figure out why. So I guess I'm just invisible in this mug, huh? And and I guess I'm just freaking invisible, huh? And I guess can't nobody see my big black behind walking through this place, then, huh? All right, y'all. Okay. I got to my desk and I saw this strange man sitting at my desk I ain't never seen before. Here, this meat sitting in my seat, man. I said, bro, get your meat out of my seat, man. <laughs> you gonna get your butt out of my seat right now, man. Whoever you is. Why you at my desk anyway? So I said, enough is enough, man. He's sitting there like he don't hit me. I went up into the boss office. Man, I stormed in that, man. Now, at first... You know, I thought he, you know, acknowledged me because he got up, but instead, you know, he walked past me and closed the door. You know, mumbling something to himself about the draft or something. He was drafting here and sat down. Now, I'm beyond mad, bro. I'm mad, mad, man. I stormed out of his office, and I ain't closed the door either, man. And I'm... I'm confused, man. What are they tr- like? They try to play a joke on me. This ain't no April fool fools. You know what y'all think y'all doing, man? Nobody got time to play around this mud. I just bust the back of my head almost open, man. Now when I got to the parking lot, cause I was like, bro, I'm going home, man. My Lexus one now. You know, like a dang Nissan Pathfinder sitting there, man. Then I tried looking for it. I couldn't find it, man. I called the police. Somebody must have stole it. My phone wouldn't work. So I just went and got on the bus, man. And I headed on home, man. I tried calling the police. You know, I tried calling for, I called for the house, man. I don't know. Maybe. I guess they must have came and repo my junk. I don't know how. I'm only three months late. Dang, they gonna repo me after three months? Shoot. Man, my uncle, man, my uncle. He rode around with his car. I ain't paid on the note for two years, man. <laughs> he ran that mug around two years, never paid, man. I know they ain't came and got me after three months. <sighs> man. Now, when I opened the door, I was greeted by my little three year old, man. And she came running up to me, smiling, shouting, Daddy, Daddy, you're back. She ran up to me, gave me a big hug. I missed you so much. I hugged her, like, hey, uh, sweetheart, where your mama at? Uh, my little girl looked up at me and said, Mommy's in the kitchen. I'll go get her. And she ran to the kitchen and came out with my wife, dragging her with one hand and pointing with the other. Look, Mommy, Daddy's back. My wife seemed to look in my direction. But she looked like she was about to cry. Instead, I knelt down to her and said, Honey, don't you remember Daddy died a few weeks ago after slipping on that ice at work? I know it's probably a lot to understand, but Daddy went up to heaven. You know, you were at the funeral, remember? I'm sorry, baby. Okay, I got one more for y'all. It has started out like any other Friday. 
me see how long this mug is before I start. Uh, 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 uh. All right, that ain't too long. Yeah, I go ahead and read it. Okay, so you know, started out like any other Friday. You know, I uh, I worked at a factory that make machine parts, and the work week ended, and we all got our pay. You know that's the setup, right? These jobs paying you on Friday. That's how they make sure you keep coming back. See, they pay you on Friday because they know Friday night, you know, if everybody home and there and the kids ain't got school tomorrow, you know, you have your wife off if she work, whatever. Everybody finna be off the next day. So everybody go out. Bam, they know that. Then they know Saturday when you wake up. You know, everybody's at home, so you're going to want to go do some kind of activity. Bam, you go do an activity. You know you got to eat, so you're going to eat. Then they know come Saturday, everybody, you know, somebody having a party, or somebody want to go to the club that night, whatever. Bam, Saturday come, you're going out again. Then they know Sunday, <laughs> you got worship in the morning, so... You gotta have to take your little money out for um. You gotta take your money out for um for offering. So you didn't took your offering money out. So now by the time you do that, you still you know you got Sunday. Everybody want to go out again for you know everybody want to go to the buffet after church, Golden Corral and all that after church get out. And then Chicago is old country buffet. I don't even know if they still got old country buffet up there. But you know everybody want to go Golden Corral one church get out. So soon worship over with you go over there by the time you done with that. So come Monday morning. <laughs> you ain't even got enough money to go to, <laughs> to make it to work, man. So you know it's all a game, man. But anyway. Uh now those that don't have families, they go straight home. And now the single guys, you know, they go out, man. You know, they might head to the bar if they got a girlfriend. They take her out on a date with them and all that. Now, you know, me, I had previously had a girlfriend. We broke up a month before. So I decided to join. Ah, oh, snap. Excuse me, y'all. I'm getting tired, man. So I decided to join a few of my coworkers and go to the nearby bar and watch the basketball game, man. Now, so my co-workers and I, you know, we had a pretty good time. Just drinking, laughing, watching the game. Calling Bull at a few of the bad calls the ref made. But, you know, we enjoyed ourselves. The game went to triple overtime. The home time team finally winning by two points, man. With the winning shot right at the buzzer, man. Now, look, man, before I go on any further. Uh, it's just killing me that we don't have no basketball right now, man. I can't believe that I'm living in a time where there's no basketball, man. I've been watching basketball all season long. And I think I already said this in another video. But I just can't believe that we don't have basketball right now. It's nothing better than... You ain't got nothing to do on Saturday and the games come on. And then when you get up out of church on Sunday, you got some more games on. And it's, oh, it's just nothing better than that, man. But I hope they come back soon. I hope they come back soon. Hey, uh, I got the Lakers. I got my money on the Lakers even though the Clippers going to win. <laughs> so anyway, uh. It was, uh, you know, it was late when we got out, man. So we all went our separate ways, man. I got on the subway to head to the crib. And now the first part of the trip was uneventful until I got off at the stop to make a transfer to another subway line in order to get to the crib, man. So when I went to make my transfer, I heard a voice over the loudspeaker. It said, the Eastern Heights local is delayed five minutes. I just, uh, you know, stood there inside. It was a coffee vending machine in the station, so I got myself a little coffee, man. You know, take some of the edge off, because I was still a little toe up, man, you know. Now, when the train finally came, I got on and I took a seat. Now, it was one old man in this old big old wool coat, man. Some brown pants and a slouch hat. 
you know, had, you know, and, and he sat on um, at the far end of the car. And he looked like he about half asleep, man. And other than me and him, that thing was empty, man. So I sat down on the other end and just let the you know, general rock of the train let me relax, man. Now, when the train stopped at another station, two more people got on. It was a man and a woman. The man was tall, about six foot four, black hair slicked back, and dressed in a black trench coat over a black suit. The woman was a few inches shorter, so I guess she about sit one, sit two. And her uh, head curly, like red hair, and a half, like one of them updos, man, and wearing a, uh, some weird looking coat, man. The girl looked like a big camel, man, <laughs> over a black dress. And they sat a few seats behind me, and the train started up again soon. Now, as the subway roared through the tunnel, I couldn't help the feeling that the couple was looking at me, just... You know, I could feel their eyes staring at the back of my head, man. And at first, I thought it was just being, you know, I was just being paranoid. And I just tried to take my mind off it. And I was just playing, you know, a little, little solitaire game and stuff on my phone, man. And that almost got up over my paranoia when I heard the woman speak in this soft, little, loft, 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 like, little soft, little low voice, man. And she said, what do you think, Munson? The man who I figured was Munson said, hmm, the guy in the front looks promising. Uh, though the older one in the far end might put up less of a struggle, Griselda. When I heard that, I said, Griselda? <laughs> Girl, what kind of name you got? Grizzly bear mixed with Zelda? Yeah, Griselda. <laughs> hey, y'all, any of y'all play Zelda growing up? You know, some of y'all might not know, man, but it has, did any of y'all play Zelda or Karina of Time or Majora Mask growing up? Even the Twilight Princess, man. You know, did any of y'all play that? Or the Link to the Past way, way back? Y'all, you know, some of y'all might have Zelda like that game on Nintendo with the guy with the little green dress shirt on. The, the shirt, but it's like a dress, too. And he got the sword and... And the shield and a little he like an elf. Boy, y'all just don't know, man. I was spent six, seven hours talking about Zelda, man. But anyway, maybe I will one day. If enough of y'all who made it to the end, if you made it to the end, say something about Zelda so I know. And um and we we I'm gonna talk about Zelda. <laughs> now um when I heard that though, man. You know, I'm thinking, I'm about to get jumped on, man. So, I'm like, bro, I hope this next station come, man. I heard Griselda speak again. And, oh, man, might be easy, but I like him fresh. But I think the guy might be a bit drunk to, you know, he might not be able to defend himself. The man spoke up and said, yeah, you're right. The young ones are, you know, indeed fresh. Now at that I jumped up and started making my way to the door I knew passengers aren't you know really supposed to walk between the cars When the train was moving unless it was an emergency But you know they give you a little fine and stuff But I, I gotta go man This was an emergency So I started moving and hoping that you know they, uh, I didn't run out of luck and that the next few cars would be crowded And maybe I could lose these people or something man And of course um a couple got up and started following me fast, man. Them big old long legs taking them big old steps, man. And all I could think about was getting through the door. And I just prayed to God that the next car would have some people in it. Because this old man ain't going to be no help, man. Just then, I lost my balance and fell to the floor. Shoot, man. I watched as a man and woman came up on me. And I looked up at them, man. I could swear their eyes was red, man. And not red like you high. But the, the, the pupil part, man. The, the color part in their eyes was red. Like blood, man. And I heard a loud pop, pop. And a couple fell to the, you know, to the floor and turned into dust, man. And I looked back and saw the old man holding one of them old double barrel pistols, man. You know, like them old... Pirate guns, man, like the one you had to, like, put the powder and stuff in yourself. You know, man, and, um, 
The old man put it back in his coat and helped me up to my feet and said, you okay? I was like, yeah, brother, I'm, man, I'm good, man. What's, what's, th- what's this, man? And I'm pointing at the two people. They turned into dust. Like, y'all ever seen Blade? Whenever Blade would kill one of the vampire people, they would, um, like, turn into that pile of dust. And the old man said, vampires are everywhere, even in the major cities. And I was like, <coughs> shoot, man, I'm, I'm all choked up, man, but thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. How you, how you kill him? man said it was silver bullets you see it's not just werewolves that can be killed with silver vampires also can be killed with silver just then the train pulled into the next stop yeah. and this is my stop the man said so he reached into his pocket and handed me a car and said if you are interested here's where you can find me and there's others who hunt down the undead and with that he left Man, this guy's so intense, man. Every word coming out of his mouth is just just so full of intenseness, man. So I sat down in the seat and looked at the car and it read A. Dot Van Helsing the Third Vassals of Heaven's Light thirty three thirty three Saint Peter Way. I think I might take Mr. Van Helsing up on his offer. And leave my job at the factory because I ain't never like it much anyway. You know, they look, you know, they don't pay nothing but but twelve dollar. You know, so the heck I'm gonna do with twelve dollar now? I might well go hunt vampire man, but you know he he was looking kind of bummy though. They might not pay much, or maybe he's looking bummy just to for like his uh. You know, what's it called? His that's his way he stay in hand. How much y'all think they pay? Hunt vampires. They gotta pay at least gotta pay at least twenty dollars now. <laughs> Shoot, twenty dollars now. Man, I hunt my own mama down for twenty dollars now. <laughs> so man, y'all just don't know. Don't let them get no benefits either, boy. Shoot, the only job my the only benefit at my job now is, is you get to steal a little something from time to time. <laughs>